welcome back to another reading vlog. I'm really excited because I have kind of a cute little TBR. I say little, but I have two book club books that I want to be able to finish. One for Wyverns and Words and one for Chaos X Cast. And then I also want to finish Chain of Iron. For Chain of Iron, I'm actually 188 pages in. Yep, 188 pages in chapter nine. If you watched my last vlog, you know that I plan on finishing this and picking up Chain of Thorns and that did not happen, but I really, really, really want to finish it this week. So I need to dedicate some time to actually sit down and pick up this book. And then as for the Wyverns and Words book club, I have Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I've heard this is a very like quick and easy fantasy to kind of get into. So I'm really, really hoping that I enjoy it before I can pick up The Dragon's Promise because I bought both of these covers and I'm not getting rid of the covers, don't get me wrong, but it'd be nice to actually enjoy them because I do have it front facing on my bookshelf. So hopefully I do enjoy it and hopefully we can have a good live show discussion, Katie and I. And then I also have Iron Widow by Shiren Zhe Zhao and I have heard also amazing, amazing things about this. Also, I'm fairly certain that the sequel is coming out very, very soon. So I'm hoping that I enjoyed enough to justify buying that book as well. But my plans for today are actually like a little bit of book shopping, but I actually have some book mail that I actually want to open up first. I'm extremely, I'm extremely excited about this package. It is literally all the way from Russia, which is insane that like the postal service literally scares me, but also like is just, it's just crazy. Ow. Oh no. Okay. Me and packages. It doesn't work. It's not good. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> this cover is so confusing. All right. Okay. 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 What? I had a lovely, lovely subscriber reach out to me and ask if I wanted the Russian edition of Ranger's Apprentice. And <laughs> was that even a question? So thank you so much to Once Upon a Time. I don't know your actual name. I'm going to be honest because it's not anywhere on your Instagram. <laughs> I was trying to stalk it and I could not find it. Okay. This is wrapped in... Um, it's wrapped in saran wrap and bubble wrap? Or is it the bubble wrap peeling? I don't know. I mean, packages. It just doesn't work. She had said after she read it, she was confused about the colors and the cover. <laughs> and she's like, I swear I didn't just send you a random Russian book. And like, I would have definitely believed this is just a random Russian book. But <laughs> I mean, it's definitely Ranger's Apprentice. I mean, okay, the cover is phenomenal, but why is he wielding a trident? He does not. This is so funny. Literally, what is this cover? Who approved this cover design? This is literally hysterical. Who, 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 who approved this cover design? Why is he wielding a trident? There are no tridents in this book. Like, not even one. Like, through all 27, 28 books, there's not a single mention of a trident. This is hysterical. And why is it snowing? <laughs> this is so funny. But I love it so much. It is literally stunning. I cannot wait to put this on my Ranger's Apprentice shelf. Do I speak a lick of Russian? No. But now I have a Russian Ranger's Apprentice book. I'm so excited. And there's also other little goodies here. This is so pretty. She also sent me a bookmark. It reads, we are stardust meant to shine. That is so pretty. And then there's a little card. Maybe if I can get it out. I, I love handwritten notes so much. Okay, okay, okay. The bookmark is made by one of her friends. So talented, oh my goodness. And the, she stuck a sticker of a strawberry on a cat for the iconic strawberry bucket hat that I have. That is so funny. But oh my goodness, thank you. Thank you so, so much. I really do appreciate this and I literally cannot wait to display this on my shelf. Oh my gosh, I love you so much. And now I'm gonna go and buy some more books.
Mary's Prentice. I do have 10 copies, but should I add another one? Probably not. Sorry, I hit recording and all you hear is just Katie going, nice knee. <laughs> Hello. It is the next day and I didn't do like a book haul from the book shopping clip because I was actually on a date and I wasn't gonna like... Well, I did take time to film book <laughs> book shopping clips because I couldn't miss the opportunity. I didn't want to like take the time to do a, like a mini book haul, you know? There's only so much time that I was willing to expend um, filming myself, but like, whatever. It's so... That's such a YouTube thing to be like, I need to whip up my camera just to get some like book shopping clips real quick. Do you mind? Thank goodness we're actually dating. Can you imagine it was like second date and I was like, hold on. <laughs> but it's the same concept of like whipping out your phone on Snapchat and taking a quick video. You just happen to have a higher quality camera. Oh, okay. I definitely do. <laughs> Anyways, back to actually updating my vlog. I only got two books, but the best part about these two books is that I didn't pay for them. Thank you. I didn't pay for these. <laughs> um, this is the first time I've ever gone on a book date where my books were paid for, so it was kind of exciting. I was I was pretty excited. I I don't think he understood why I was so excited, but I had gone on like multiple like dates to bookshops and had to buy my own books, so it was just a new experience. It's never offered to buy your books. No. No wonder the relationship didn't last. Didn't even start. <laughs> Okay, so these two books I've actually read before, and they're not books that I would have really thought to buy, except for recently I did a bookshelf, like, reorganization, and my copy was, like, really beat up, and I was gonna get rid of it, but then I was like, but I kind of want to reread this book series, so I don't want to get rid of my copy. But then if I find them in hardback, then maybe I'll get them. And then, like, literally the next day I found them in hardback, and that is The Fifth Wave and The Infinite Sea. I was gonna get The Last Star, but the copy was, like, slightly too damaged to justify buying, so I'll just have to keep my eye out and pick it up if I, like, see it in a decent condition. Why is my footage so dark? We were doing so good, camera. Alright, come on, camera. Pull your shit together. I feel like it's getting darker. I guess I should have prefaced this clip with being, like, sorry for the shit lighting. We'll do it midway through. Sorry for the shit lighting. Anyway... <laughs> I really like this book series and I do want to reread it. It was one of those series that I read the first book and then I never continued the series because I was like, I don't really care what happens. But then I read the rest of the series and I was like, actually, that was pretty good. And they are nice covers and I quite like them. You can't really see it because I decided to do the book haul in the dark. But anyways, um, Katie's also here. I'll have her say hello against her will. Hello, everybody. How are we all doing this fine evening? Just kidding. It's one in the morning. It, yeah, it's definitely one in the morning. We did a little bit of a Simon Hate Fest, which is what we say when we watch the Shadowhunters TV show. This episode this was... This episode was so bad. Y'all, like, y'all don't even understand how painful this was. It was terrible. It was That's horrendous. Crazy. It made me physically nauseous. Like... It's the... It's It was a plot line we could have lived without. They could have easily written it out of the TV show. Like, they already added so many other random plot lines that, like, why not exclude the plot line that no yeah. one likes? It's just, like, it's such a choice. It's a bad choice. It's the wrong choice. It's a choice that should have never been made. But I was supposed to finish... Finish. Start. <laughs> Six Crimson Cranes tonight. But it's one in the morning, and I need to go to bed. But it is also... Wednesday. Well, technically it's Thursday. Now I have two days to finish Six Crimson Cranes, but like, are we surprised at this point? Like, I have already set the expectations low that if you expect anything else from me, you're in the wrong. If anything, I'm gonna finish- I'm gonna have to finish this literally Friday. Like, I don't know when I'm gonna have time to pick this up. It's fine. I'm slowly getting my life back together, but it's just- I keep spending all my time talking to people, like Katie. Yeah, but I'm worth it. She's worth it. <laughs> 100%. I'm trying to think of what brand has that tagline. We're worth it. Company. It's we're worth it. You're worth it. It's a makeup one, right? Is it CoverGirl? No. That's easy, breezy, beautiful. CoverGirl. 
I used to watch Americans uh, Next Top Model with my mom. Um, L'Oreal. Okay. Anyways. Yes, you're sorry. Anyways. Katie is the worst enabler in my life. Thank goodness. Hey. Thank shush, 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 shush. Thank goodness she's not like an enabler in the form of like anything negative. Like, if she was a drug dealer, I think I'd be dead. <laughs> Let me explain. So there I was on like a like a, a book buying ban in the beginning of the year. Like I made it through January, no books. And then I bought Chain of Thorns. And I was like, okay, that doesn't count. Like it counts, but it's like a new release. And then I'm going to read it soon, so it doesn't count. But then I went book shopping and I bought four books. And then I went book shopping again and I bought two books, but not technically because I didn't pay for those. But then there I was talking about how I really wanted the Waterstones exclusive edition of Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. Because R.F. Kuang is my favorite author. All the books I have by her are signed. And I'm like, they have a signed exclusive UK edition. Why wouldn't I buy that? Because the shipping cost the same amount as the book. So I was like, well, I'm not going to spend that type of money on shipping, you know? But if I added more books to my cart, it, it balances out in my brain, you know? Like paying $15 for shipping for one book versus like five or four. Okay, I had 13 books on my cart at one point. Okay, it was bad. <laughs> but then I removed, what's math? Uh, nine of them. I removed nine of them. So I bought four books. That was a Katie thing. She did convince me to remove nine of those books. But then I bought, what is it called? Warbreaker? But then I bought Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson off a of book depository because I was like, I need that book. And then I bought Stormglass by Jeff Wheeler off of Amazon because I was like, I need that book for like my Patreon book club. So I still spent $100 on books, but it could have been worse. It could have been double that. But I also could have gotten 13 books. But Katie stopped me. But at the same time, she started this whole problem. So... You... Where's the link? Okay. How did I start this? Because you had mentioned how expensive Waterstones resold for. Oh. No, see, I was talking about the fact that Waterstones exclusive edition sell for, like, resell for a lot of money. Therefore. No, actually, it makes sense. Because I talked you into buying Yellow Face, because if you didn't buy it now, it'd be like $300 later. Well, I don't know if Yellow Face would probably go for that much. So really, you're saving yourself money in the long run. And if you decide that you do not want that edition of Yellow Face, you can always resell it. So therefore, it is an investment in your future. And then I had to justify shipping costs. So it was like a team effort. Yeah, I had nothing to do with that shipping cost business, so leave me out of it. Every time we talk about books and covers, she's the reason I bought Six Crimson Cranes and The Dragon's Promise. I am... Yeah, she's rubbing off on me like hardcore. It's kind of a problem. And also, also it's it's way past 1 a.m. It is like 1.45 a.m. It's almost 2 a.m. I am in the same exact spot as I was the other night when I was vlogging, but I've actually started Six Crimson Cranes, finally. Also, I'm sick, <laughs> so life is just kicking my ass. <laughs> I made it to page 170. It is Friday, so I do have to finish this today. It is also currently almost 6 p.m., so there's there's that, too. Um, I was kind of worried when I heard a lot of the people in the Discord talking about how juvenile the writing style was, and I immediately could tell what they were talking about because they started the audiobook yesterday at work, and, uh, yeah. It's definitely, like, way more juvenile in writing than I was expecting. Not only, like, the writing style, but also in terms of, like, how quickly the plot is moving along. Things are just kind of, like, happening with no lead-up, and it's kind of boring almost because there's, like, I don't know, even, like, there was a big scene. It was, like, the whole scene that, like, set up the big curse and the conflict in the book and I literally was like this feels so low stakes even though it was like not low stakes of like what is happening right now. Yeah I'm just really bored right now which sucks because I feel like it's easier to get through a book that I'm like super invested in versus 
a book that like I'm just kind of like bored with. I, I do need to sit down and actually like read a little bit more of it. I'm just... <sighs> Well, I need to finish it tonight, not read a little bit more of it. I'm just really disappointed in, like, the writing. I thought it'd give a little bit more substance, but uh, there's nothing really to say other than, like, it's pretty juvenile. I think my favorite character is the freaking paper crane named Kiki. But in the audiobook, the way the narrator, like, narrated her voice, I was like, shh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> not exactly having the best time with this book, unfortunately. And I just need to take a break from it, because... I just, I need to finish it tonight, but I just don't want to. Even though this is like a quick read, it's taking me forever just because I never feel like picking it up. Those are my thoughts right now. I really hope I feel better for tomorrow's live show. I kind of got a little bit sick yesterday because my coworker came in with a sore throat and then I woke up yesterday with a sore throat and I was like, fuck. <laughs> um, and then last night was really bad. I was like shivering really badly. And yeah, hopefully I, I don't have a fever or anything. I'm just like miserable. So that's good, but it still sucks. But yeah, I'm going to take like a little bit of a break from this book. And then when I pick it back up and have some more thoughts, I will share them with you. So I'm live streaming in like four minutes, but last night I did finally finish Six Crimson Cranes. I'm about to start the live show. So I'll have to update the vlog after. Shush, computer. I'll have to update the vlog like after about my actual thoughts but it was a three star so not fantastic also katie's here uh as per as per the huge hey hey <laughs> how y'all doing <laughs> Please. so that's that's what we're about to do and i'll talk about the book after or you can just watch the live one of the two you should watch the live Katie says you should watch the live. Okay, the live stream is done. It was a fun time, as always. We had, I mean, some interesting discussion. It wasn't, like, too in-depth, though, because neither of us really enjoyed the book, like, that much. We both gave it, like, three stars. But basically, like, the main points that I had made, I think I would have enjoyed this a lot more if it wasn't marketed towards YA, because I don't think this is a YA book. I think it should have been marketed towards middle grade, and it was not. I think the concept was very interesting. I think it could have been, actually we're discussing this, it would have been really good as like a Studio Ghibli movie or like a Disney movie, but in book form it was just not, it fell flat a little bit on like everything they were trying to do. Nothing felt fleshed out, like not a lot of detail was provided, so I was just disappointed overall in kind of the situations that were happening. The plot got a little bit interesting near the end, but I was talking about perhaps picking up the second book and a lot of people in the comments were like, don't do it, it's not worth it, it wasn't very good. So now I'm like, okay, maybe I do not want to pick up the second book. I probably won't waste my time, but I will probably keep the books because they're pretty. <laughs> so that's, that's that on that, I guess. My next goal is to freaking pick up Chain of Iron and finish that or perhaps Iron Widow. It is Saturday, it's the last day before my weekend starts. So Monday, which is in two days, I'm hoping to actually like go out, go to the full cup, get some reading done. Tomorrow I might go to the library. I don't know if they're open on Sundays. I don't know, a lot of things are closed on Sundays. So depending on if the library is open or not, will depend on if I leave my house tomorrow or not, but I probably will leave it Monday. So in the meantime, I just wanna read Chain of Iron and hopefully be able to update y'all on that and also pick up Iron Widow very soon here, shortly. Very soon here, shortly. I want to pick up Iron Widow shortly. <laughs> the backlight's so bad. Okay, let me... That makes it slightly better. I guess ignore the big bright white light behind my head. But, uh, Pop-Tart in hand. Let's, let's discuss Chain of Iron. You can't even see the title. Chain of Iron. I stayed up last night reading until page 570. So, um, I spent quite a bit of time reading. Also, I like Pop-Tarts now. That is a very important development. And then this morning I actually spent some time reading A Court of Mist and Fury. I was working on some thumbnails and listening to my audiobook for like an hour and a half. So lovely, so relaxing, but I'm at a point in Cassandra Clare books where shit is about to go down because she just loves to leave everyone on a cliffhanger near the end of her books. And not a lot has really happened to where I'm worried yet. And that's the thing that worries me is like the lack of worry currently. We've had a couple of deaths, which I think were supposed to impact me a little bit more, but I was like, oh, that sucks, moving on. And there has been a recent development with James. And I swear, I cannot think if this plotline has happened in a different Cassandra Clare book or a different book in general. And it's literally driving me up the wall. Um, 
literally like I mm, it's annoying me so much that I can't figure out if this certain plot line was in another Cassandra Clare book or not but I'm gonna sit here and read a little bit more of this because I don't feel like doing anything but reading today which is lovely because I have the entire day off to do nothing but whatever the fuck I want to which is wild I'm gonna eat my pop-tart and read and um, I'm very excited about that and I'll pop back in with some thoughts when I feel like not reading okay turns out I fell asleep reading and I put my bookmark in some random ass place because like I don't remember how far into the book I was or not because I literally stayed up pretty late reading um, but I am not, in fact, on page 500, whatever I said earlier. I think I'm around page 350. Oh, okay, cool. 354 is where I'm at. I'm stupid. Um, still eating my Pop-Tart, though. Why? Like, I was sleeping on Pop-Tarts. Like, are they unhealthy? Yeah. But do I love them? Yeah. <laughs> page 364. Page 364. <laughs> I'm... I'm... I'm literally screaming. I'm literally screaming. Y'all. <laughs> I know this is a YA, but it's not giving YA. I'm literally... <laughs> Please! <gasps> Stop. I love them. I love them, and if not end game I'm going to flip my shit that's all I'm saying that's all I'm saying that's all I'm saying oh my gosh I'm on page 534 I have never been more freaking stressed at a book in my entire existence Cassandra Clare is gonna do me so dirty and I'm not ready so just <sighs> I'm just gonna sit here and read this scene that's gonna destroy me real quick Here's my thing about Cassandra Clare books, is they are so bloody long and slow. But the payoff of like the climax at the end when everything kind of comes to fruition is just so worth it. Oh my gosh. I am so stressed and I still have another hundred or so pages to go. That scene was fucking wild. There are not enough pages left for this book to have a good ending and I am incredibly stressed again. First time was from plot. This time it's from characters making stupid decisions and not just talking. The miscommunication in this book is literally on another level. Like, just literally talk to each other and half the problems would be solved. I, there are not enough pages left. Uh-uh. I swear to God, if they're introducing a love triangle, I'm gonna riot. Oh, no, I'm just stupid. Okay, wait. Uh So this is my pack to like never read Cassandra Clare books unless the series is complete because I can't imagine waiting a whole fucking year on this ending. What the fuck? Hello, today is Monday and I had a lovely day yesterday. Uh, I spent most of it just like looking like a rat and just relaxing and doing uh, next to nothing, I did read a little bit, I did edit a little bit, and I just scrolled through YouTube and watched a bunch of videos a little bit. So, kind of a solid, rounded, just do-nothing day. 
and I just tried not to feel guilty about doing nothing, which is very, very hard for me, but I think I mostly succeeded. However, I am pretty tired, pretty low energy today. However, it is Monday, which means the full cup is open, so I'm gonna go get my serotonin boost for the week by going to my favorite coffee shop slash bookstore. However, I was watching Katie's vlog. I am still not done. I have like 10 minutes left. 13 minutes left? Yeah, I have 14 minutes left of Katie's vlog, but I thought I'd put it on pause for a second because I finished getting ready and I actually wanted to give some more coherent thoughts about Chain of Iron because I feel like <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I said yesterday but it was a lot of bumbling just me being stressed nonsense and I wanted to actually like give you my thoughts. I think I'm gonna rate this a 4.5. I was gonna get it for 5 stars. I'm gonna rate it 5 stars on Goodreads. I think it was just too, like the pacing just kind of sucked and the pacing does suck for a lot of Cassandra Clare books I feel like but the payoff is worth it just for this book. I don't know if it's because I took like a little bit of a gap but it took me like 100 pages to get into and then there's like a big chunk in the middle probably another like 100 pages or so where I was like okay can we like get the plot kind of moving. It felt like we were very like stagnant for a while where so many pages had passed and I was looking back on what had occurred and it felt like there was like next to nothing that happened. However, I'm a little ho for Cassandra Clare so she's still getting my 4.5 star rating because it's it's truly brilliant. Just the little easter eggs she'll drop along the way to then like lead up to the big plot reveal. And the big plot reveal and the whole kind of like battle situation in the end, you saw my reactions. I was stressing. And then I was almost like equally, if not more stressed about the relationship tension. Um, the cliffhanger on this, truly, I'm like boggled that people had to sit on this for like a year and then the release date for Chain of Thorns got pushed back. And I was like, that is actually true suffering. And I'm so glad that Chain of Thorns is out and I waited to read these because I would have been so annoyed with <laughs> the ending. But I was ready for Cassandra Clare to like rip my heart out and stomp on it. And honestly, she like started to rip my heart out. But instead she just kind of like stressed me out. I think everything will hopefully come to a good conclusion. I don't really like the love triangle situation that they're setting up. I think that there was no lead up to that. I This unrequited love situations, like every single character I swear to god is in a situation where they're just like unrequited love. Just crushing on someone hardcore. And I'm like, move on. Move on buddy. Move on. I hope things get sorted. A lot of miscommunication, which I forgot how much I hate miscommunication. I'm just like, sleep on it and then go talk to them. Do not run away. That would be like a concept. Okay, maybe I'm a little bit of a hypocrite. Running away from your problems is the easier way out, but like sleep on it. You gotta sleep on it. However, since I finished Chain of Iron, and the only other book I have left on my TBR is actually like too far for me to grab. I don't feel like grabbing it. Uh, is Iron Widow. I'm going to pack that book when I go to the full cup. However, I am still listening to A Court of Mist and Fury on audio. And we're getting close. We're getting close to the end of this book. Um, like, I'm probably... Well, no. I was going to say three quarters of the way in, but I think I'm like a little less than that. So maybe like three fifths of the way into this book. And I just love the serotonin that Sarah J Maas' universe gives me. And I... I am so excited. I'm very excited to reread Silver Flame because that is a book that I didn't like really really enjoy the first go around but I know I'm gonna absolutely freaking devour it the second go around and yeah. Uh, I also got some book mail in. This is Stormglass by Jeff Wheeler. It is very very pretty. I'm really digging the cover. However it is my Patreon book club for March and since it is March, I have like a thing where like every other month you get a bookmark themed around the book sent out to you. So I'm going to also kind of like, hopefully, like I say, I, I might, I'm going to bring my iPad to hopefully do this, but I need to sketch out like a bookmark design. I have like an inkling, definitely going to be using these like floating islands because that is freaking stunning. And I'm also going to be bringing my bullet journal because February plays with me every single year where I am just absolutely mad chillin' and then suddenly it's March because I forget that February doesn't have like the extra three days or two days tagged on the end. And every year of my existence, it throws me off. Especially since I bullet journal, I'm like, I got time, I got time. 
where are we now? I started sketching in my bullet journal yesterday. It is in my other room and I do not feel like getting that. So you'll see some clips of me working on it at the coffee shop because it is something that I'm actually like really in the mood for, which is why I mentioned Mist and Fury because I am listening to it on audio. And that's kind of like the main goal is to just listen to my audiobook and work on my bullet journal. But my theme for this month is based on an anime slash like, it's an anime, but it's made in the U.S., specifically, like, in Texas, so is it really an anime? Uh, but it's called Ruby, spelled R-W-B-Y. I was, like, absolutely obsessed with it, and it was my February and March theme back in, like, 2018. And I was just, like, really in the mood to draw the weapons in that show, so I decided, like, fuck it, I'm gonna just kind of reuse my theme and draw inspiration from that. Uh, so that's what I did, because I didn't feel like trying to come up with a new theme. I was like, I just feel like drawing these weapons and like coloring them, which is weird. So that's the main kind of goal. Also, I'm like super congested. So if I sound kind of sick, that is why, because I was sick. Anyways, I'm going to go. Um, I never really explained what this book was about, but like this synopsis is actually kind of interesting. Uh, there are two kind of opposite characters, one rich, one poor, one living up in the sky, one living down below, and they kind of want to like switch lives. They both kind of want what the others have. I'm not sure how they meet or anything in that whole situation, and there's some sort of like big turmoil within like the kingdom and the world, and so that I'm just really excited to jump into it. It's I think a five book series, the Harbinger series, I don't know. I've heard some interesting things, and this is the book that kind of won the vote over my Patreon, so I'm pretty excited about this one. I wasn't gonna buy it, but then I was like, the covers are pretty, and they didn't have it in my library, so I was like, I guess I'm gonna buy it. Anyways, let me pack my bag and let us be off.
Just want to do a quick little update. It's like extra embarrassing to like update in a public space, but I'm on a bridge. So maybe I'm fine. I've been just listening to more of A Court of Mist and Fury and I just forgot how bloody good this book is. It's so good. I'm not gonna stay out here much longer though because I'm starting to sweat because this is like Texas and I'm wearing a sweater and fuzzy boots which was like not the best idea but it's been cold. It was like 40 yesterday and now it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Crazy. I'm gonna probably head back into my car with AC and then back into my house with AC. Um, yeah. Still really enjoying Mist and Fury. It's so good. So, I have a confession to make. I was supposed to start reading Iron Widow. Instead, I picked up Chain of Thorns. And it's so freaking pretty. Are you kidding me? It's literally purple, and so I'm using my purple bookmark, and that is stunning. Yeah, I threw my TBR out the window, even though I still do need to pick that up, and I started reading Chain of Thorns. I'm actually going to visit my parents' house right now, and probably sit down and read more of this. Every time I say I'm gonna read over there, I don't though. So honestly, we'll see what I do. I have not a clue, but that's my little update for today. Very quick. Also, I got my hair done, so it's looking nice and fresh again. I love Cassandra Clare. Uh, anyway, moving on. I feel like wearing this shirt with this hair and makeup is just like rude, but I'm still in my pajamas. I haven't picked out an outfit because I'm actually doing laundry right now and that is irrelevant but hello today is the last day of this vlog it is a wednesday and i <laughs> i'm in a crisis imposter syndrome is something i have not felt in a very long while but let me explain this is not a book update i am going to be heading to the full cup later uh, after my load of laundry is done to read more of chain of thorns i'm only about 16 pages in so we're making like hella progress but I'm hoping to read at least 100 pages before I go into work. But I wanted to go to the coffee shop today, but I wanted to first give an update about my jujitsu training because I am literally in a crisis and I don't think I'm supposed to be in a crisis about this. So to explain jujitsu in like the belt ranking basically, so there's like five different belts uh, at most gyms, but you get like stripes on your belt. You get four stripes before you actually like level up to the next belt rank, if that makes sense. And I am a no stripe white belt and today I was pulled aside by my coaches and they were like, hey, we're gonna pause and we're gonna go back and give a little bit of context. So I have been going to two different gyms and this was my original gym and this original gym hates this gym. However, I'm switching over to this gym because it works better with my schedule and I actually love the coaches and the people there way more. And so... I'm finally done at this gym. So they had asked me if I was done at this gym and I told them yes. Literally like yesterday was my last day. I'm done. They've kind of pissed me off, rubbed me the wrong way. And so I'm like, okay, I'm done. My contract's up, whatever. So they're like, okay, good, because we wanted to stripe you, but we didn't want you to get in trouble over at the other gym because this gym hates this gym. This gym doesn't really like this gym, but is chill. So basically, I couldn't tell my old gym where I was going. I, like, up and left because I didn't want any, like, drama. Because it's ridiculous, this whole, like, Romeo and Juliet war type situation. Except for, like, one side gives no shits and the other side gives too many shits. Way too much drama for, like, a gym. Anyways, so they tell me that they wanted to stripe my belt, but they didn't want me to get in trouble at my other gym. And in my head, I was like... Oh, you think I'm good enough to stripe me? Like, that is so cool. I went into my car. I was like, that is so exciting that they think that, like, I'm good enough to have a stripe on my belt. I've only been training, like, a month and a half. And the fact that they think I'm that good already is, like, ooh, a little ego boosting. And then I made a mistake. <laughs> and I, like, did a little Google search being like, okay, like, how long does it typically take people to get, like, one stripe on their belt? Apparently it's three to six months. So that kind of boosted my ego, but then immediately the imposter syndrome just like got its claws in me because I'm like, do I even know enough to properly earn this stripe? Like, am I actually that good enough? Or like, what is, like, nope, I actually suck. I don't want this stripe. I don't want expectations. Ah, so part of me is like, okay, the co my, my coach would not give me this stripe unless he like really thought I earned it and deserved it and thought I was good enough. But then the other part of me is like, bro, you don't know shit. You suck at jujitsu. Like, mm -mm -mm. people are going to be judging you hardcore now because you're going to have tape on your belt and you still suck. So <laughs> that is my crisis about jujitsu. That's my little rant. Whew, I just needed that off my chest. But it's kind of exciting, but it's kind of not. Anyways, I am literally going to just go pack some Etsy orders. And bro, my laundry just finished. That is impeccable timing. So I'm going to go 
deal with that situation, put in a new load, and then head off to the coffee shop to read more of Chain of Thorns, which I am, I'm incredibly excited about. Iron Widow is taking a little bit of a back burner, uh, but I can't take, like, I can't send the back burner for too long because I have a, like, a discussion, a lab discussion this Saturday, which is, like, coming up very quickly because it is Wednesday. So will I have to pick up Iron Widow and read it in two days last minute because I'm reading Chain of Thorns instead? Yes, but that is besides the point. home now and I read for about 45 minutes ish uh, I had to leave a little bit early because I remembered that like I don't know I have to eat food before I go to work or else I'm going to absolutely be dead so I left a little bit earlier than I had planned to because I planned on not eating apparently uh, but I made it to page 110 and it's again like the same sort of situation where things are a little bit slow to kind of get into. The lead between Chain of Iron and Chain of Thorns was really good to where they're like playing off of what's going on. I'm just really impatient because I want the plot to like get moving. There are just so many POVs which is why these chapters are so long. The chapters are actually split up between like multiple POVs but chapter wise they are very long which doesn't really bother me because there are multiple breaking points within the chapter where you could pause lots of POVs and I'm like who are these people again I don't I don't remember there's one plot line in particular about a character that whose name starts with an A and that's all I'll give you and I'm just like what who are these people what plot are we trying to like bring into this now I'm enjoying it though I love how easy it is just to suck myself right into Cassandra Clare books they just, they're so like comforting, even though they stress me out beyond belief, which speaking of stressing out, it is time to end this vlog. So in the vlog, I was able to finish Chain of Iron, which y'all saw my reactions to. I was stressed. I was high key stressing out. And I loved this book so much, 4.5, like I said. And I, like, I was so excited to pick up Chain of Thorns that I threw out my TBR to pick up Chain of Thorns. So finally making my way through the last hours trilogy. Why did I wait as long as I did? I don't know. It's just like the person that I am, but thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Cassandra Clare books, like I said, they're just, they're so comforting. And then I did also read Six Crimson Cranes, not my favorite novel, little bit unmemorable and just very average, marketed in the wrong category. It should be a juvenile versus a young adult kind of situation in my opinion but I get how people enjoyed this book three point did I three star this three and a half star I don't remember what I gave it but three something or just straight up three and a uh, court of mist and fury I am on chapter I am so close to the end oh my gosh y'all I'm on chapter 54 I'm listening to the audiobook like I mentioned I was just gonna try to see um where I'm at here oh god 
oh this chapter 54 is basically equal to if not better than chapter 55 everyone talks about chapter 55 but we should be talking about chapter 54 that is the scene I'm like in the middle of uh, it's page 524 and I think I have like an hour and a half left in the audiobook I can actually probably check that that would be a, be a nice thing to do that way I can let y'all know here oh okay I have two hours and 53 minutes left I was like oh I'll probably finish it at work tonight yeah I don't know um no <laughs> okay so I have three hours left of the audiobook never mind I'm going to <laughs> finish it within the next like couple of days I guess but I've been really really enjoying the reread once again just like very comforting this entire vlog was just uh, such good books such good books and I'm just very happy with like the amount of reading I got done with how busy I've been I know I didn't read like as much as I wanted to but hopefully it was still a decent amount to keep y'all entertained my next vlog I am extremely excited about so be on the lookout for that I'm so excited um, thank y'all so, so much for sticking around. I really hope that y'all did enjoy. Thank you to my lovely Patreons over on my book club, Chaos X Cast. Super fun time over there. Always love discussing books with y'all, and I will be thrilled to discuss Iron Widow whenever I read it, which will be probably tomorrow, because there's, there's no way I'm going to be able to, like, finish Shane of Thorns before I pick up Iron Widow. That is just the truth, and it is a blank truth that I just have to look right in the eyes and be like, okay, Cass. Set down your other book again. So one thing about Cassandra Clare books, they're so long. They're just such a time commitment. But I'm going to get rambly, and we don't want that. We want this vlog to end. So thank y'all so, so much, and I really hope to see you in the next one. Toodles!